Okay, so welcome to this video, next video, in which we are uh, studying Golgi to E, R, or uh, retrograde transport. So we've seen how if we have a luminal protein with this k sequence in it, then it will bind to the k receptor, activate the k receptor, which will then bind and activate uh, the ADP ribosylation factor guanine nucleotide exchange factor, the ARF-GEF, uh, which is now going to take the inactive ARF uh, protein, which has GDP bound to it, and instead swap that GDP for a GTP. And when ARF has a GTP bound to it, it then becomes active. And what's going to happen is it's going to um, change conformation, expose a hydrophobic tail, and now it's going to be able to bind into this um, cis-Golgi membrane. So where shall I show this? I think I'll show it here. Okay, so it's got this hydrophobic tail that is now stuck into the membrane of the cis Golgi. And you now have this ADP ribosylation factor which is bound to guanosine triphosphate instead of guanosine diphosphate. Okay, there we go. And let's cover that in. So we'll have it in orange. Okay. So here's the ARF in orange, the ADP ribosylation factor, which has now changed conformation so that it has this hydrophobic tail, which allows it to now, uh, uh, well, latch onto, in effect, uh, the uh, cis-Golgi membrane. Okay, right. So, uh, now what's going to happen is that COP2 protein um, complexes are going to come and bind to the ARF GTP basically that's in uh, the um, in the membrane of the cis Golgi nearby uh, this k receptor and this ARF GEF basically. So what's going to come and happen is how am I going to show this? We're going to have to go onto a different piece of paper. So uh, if we have uh, the Golgi membrane here, what's going to happen basically is if we have our protein here with the KDEL sequence, okay, so here's our KDEL sequence, which I'll just draw like that, that is now bound to this KDEL receptor here. So this is the KDEL receptor, okay, KDEL R, okay, and remember that has activated this guanine, uh, sorry, this ARF guanine nucleotide exchange factor here. So let's colour these things in because they look far nicer coloured in. So I have KDEL in pink here. Okay. Uh, then in blue we'll have the KDEL receptor, which is in the membrane of the cis Golgi. And then we have this ARF guanine nucleotide exchange factor, which we'll have in turquoise here, which has basically allowed us to activate, so this is the ARF, or the ADP ribosylation factor, guanine nucleotide exchange factor, GEF, which has that allowed us to activate the ARF protein, or the ADP ribosylation factor, ARF, over here, so that it now has this hydrophobic portion that sticks through the membrane, basically. So this will have in red, basically. Okay, and now ARF has a in this active state, when ARF has this hydrophobic tail sticking through, um, it's got GTP bound to it, and that's thanks to the ARF guanine nucleotide exchange factor over there. Okay, now what's going to happen is the COP1 protein complexes, which stand for coat protein complexes 1 of the first type, are going to come and bind here. Okay, so this is COP1. Coat protein complex 1. So I will just write that out. Coat protein complex 1. Okay, and it's often for some reason done in Roman numerals like this, so the 1, that's why the 1 is denoted by a single I. Okay, right, so what colour shall we do that in? Uh, what haven't we used so far? We haven't used purple, we'll have cop 1 in purple. Right, so in this deep sort of purple colour is our COP1 protein. Okay, now what's going to happen is that in the neighbourhood of these luminal proteins, basically, on the cis Golgi, what's going to happen is you're going to produce lots of ARF protein uh, with this GTP bound to it, and therefore you're going to have lots of COP1. So what's going to gradually happen is you're going to 
put a lot of COP1 proteins in the neighbourhood here. And what happens is that those sort of pinch off a vesicle. So what you're doing gradually is you're pinching off this vesicle. So, uh, basically what you're doing is surrounding this with COP1 proteins. And I won't draw the full convex, I'll just draw this COP1. And I think, I want to stress again that the COP1 is binding to this ARF. It is utterly ARF dependent, basically. It's utterly ADP ribosidation factor dependent. But now what's happening is that the COP1 proteins are coating this vesicle. Okay, so we'll have them in purple here. Okay, and these are coating this vesicle, and they are gradually pinching it off. And inside that vesicle will be these um, this original luminal protein that you wanted to take out with the KDAL sequence, because this COP1 is being assembled nearby where these proteins were. So here are these luminal proteins with the KDAL sequence. And of course, you're going to have to have more than one to get enough COP1 uh, in that neighbourhood in order to actually pinch off a vesicle, basically. So you've got these luminal proteins with these KDAL sequences, and you're pinching off this vesicle. And what's eventually going to happen is that this vesicle is actually going to pinch off, okay, here, and then you'll have this COP1 coated vesicle. So it will be coated in COP1 proteins, which are all bound to these ADP ribosylation factors, which are there because um, the KDAL um, sequence was present in these proteins. So let me just finish this picture off by drawing this vesicle here. Okay, right, so this is our COP1 uh, coated vesicle now. So this is a COP1 coated vesicle, which is going to make its way back from the cis -Gol well, it's going to make its way from the cis -Golgi to the ER. So this is a COP1 coated vesicle. Okay, so now what we're going to do next, what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to look uh, at membrane proteins. So we've done uh, luminal proteins. What we're now going to do is membrane proteins because they're going to uh, also form COP1 coated vesicles. And it makes sense to firstly look at the budding process. We've done it for luminal proteins, but now to do it for um, membrane proteins and then continue the story on from once we've done that, basically. Okay, so back to square one then. Let's say we've got a membrane here and we have some membrane-bound protein here, which has ended up quite slanted, unfortunately. Um, so this is our membrane-bound protein here. Okay, uh, and this protein needs to be transported back from the, um, from the Golgi apparatus to the ER. Okay, so how do you signal that it needs to be moved back? Well, basically, it will have a signaling sequence as well. And this signaling sequence is the KKX sequence, or KKXX. Okay, so KKXX is the way we write the signaling sequence for membrane proteins. Now, what does this mean? This is again referring to four amino acids. However, X, if you look up what the single amino acid code for X is, it won't give you an answer, because X basically means it can be any amino acid you like. So really, all that we need is a K and a K here. So we need two lysine amino acids next to each other. So I'll just remind you of the structure of lysine. So I'll draw two lysines for you. Okay, right. So um, where should I draw this? I'll draw it here. So what you'll have is here's the amino terminus of the first lysine, and then here's the alpha car, and it will obviously be joined to the carboxyl terminus of the previous amino acid. Here's the alpha carbon. And then off the alpha carbon, the R group of lysine is four carbons with an amino group on the end and hydrogens off all of these carbons, like so. Okay. So that's the R group of lysine. And then what will happen is you'll have it um, peptide bonded to another one of these. So here's the carboxyl group linked uh, in this peptide link with the amino group of the next lysine along. So here's the alpha carbon again. Here is the R group of lysine again. 
So this basically is what you need to have present somewhere, and it needs to be exposed, of course. Um, you need to have this exposed, basically, on the extra semi. Uh, sorry, no, on the extra semi, on the extra luminal side. So it needs to be facing the cytoplasm. So this is the cytoplasm, and this is the Golgi lumen. Okay, so if it's facing the Golgi lumen, it's useless. It needs to be exposed, and it needs to be on the cytoplasmic side. So here are four carbons, like so, and then we have this amino group right on the end, like that. And then, of course, you'll have this carboxyl group, which will then be linked onwards. So, you need to have these two lysines uh, neighbouring one another, and uh, that will then be the signal for this protein to be removed and put into COP2, well, COP1-coated vesicles. Right, now, the process is not nearly as nicely um, pathwayed out as uh, for luminal proteins. What we do know is that COP1 appears to come and bind to this KKX region here, but it also does it in an R-dependent manner. It needs the ADP ribosylation factor also to bind here, and we don't know the way that this happens, basically. We don't know whether the COP1 directly binds to this KKX or uh, the ARF firstly binds here, and then the COP1 binds here as well. What we do know is that you need COP1 and ARF, so I'll draw some ARF here as well. So, somehow, basically, this also gets, um, this also gets budded out in COP1-coated vesicles, okay? And it does involve both COP1 and ARF. Okay, so here is our COP1 protein complex again here. So what is going to happen, though, is you're going to uh, bud off a vesicle containing these uh, membrane-bound proteins, uh, and uh, it will be coated in COP1. So overall, what you're going to get is another one of these COP1-coated vesicles, but this time, the membrane protein uh, will be in the membrane of the vesicle, whereas in the case of the luminal protein, it will be in the lumen of the vesicle. Okay, so now let's look at the transportation process of these COP1-coated vesicles uh, to the um, ER membrane. Okay, uh, so the way it's going to work is it's going to be transported along microtubules. So, if we draw the membrane of the Golgi again here, so this is the Golgi membrane and this is the ER membrane, then we create these COP1-coated vesicles here and they're going to migrate along microtubules that span uh, the distance between the uh, cis-Golgi membrane here, so this is the cis-Golgi membrane, and the ER membrane over here. Okay, so these COP1-coated vesicles, which I'll just draw as pink vesicles, those are going to move along these microtubules here, so this is a microtubule, uh, to the ER membrane, okay? And they're going to fuse with the ER membrane. Right. Now, before they can actually begin the fusion process with the ER membrane, what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to uncoat them. So you're going to have to take off all of the COP1 proteins, or at least partially uncoat uh, the vesicle. Uh, the reason is that at the moment, this vesicle is absolutely covered in COP1 proteins. I know I've drawn here having gaps, but that's unrealistic. It is utterly covered in COP1. COP1, remember, has pinched off this vesicle. So what it had to form was a great big sort of mesh around the whole vesicle that sort of gradually um, extended to pinch this um, this connection between the vesicle and the, um, and the ER membrane off and um, actually give you a, a, a vesicle in its own right. So COP1 completely surrounds the vesicle and you can't get fusion of the vesicle with the ER membrane if COP1 is still completely um, coating the surface of the vesicle. So you have to uncoat the vesicle. So uncoating then occurs. Okay. So this is the process of uncoating. And uh, now the vesicle confused with the ER membrane. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.